the banks glow green with an explosion of ferns and grasses. The gas grill crowd the rivers and the eagles stand by for an easy meal. The forest is a symphony of songbirds and spring peepers, while the brook trout loom in the strongest currents. But black flies and low water levels ward off the curious traveler looking to witness this incredible spark of life that marks the transition from spring to summer. Over the next three days, I'm going to try my best to camp and fish down a remote stretch of river here in eastern Canada to really experience this magical time of the year. This is so cool. There's not only Gasparo, there's suckers. There has to be hundreds. As far as I know, you can't catch Gasparo when they're spawning. They're just not interested, but let me give it a go. I don't think there's enough real estate, but there, maybe there's a brook trout or two in there. The target fish on this trip is the brook trout. This time of year, they should be really tight into the rapids, actively going for bugs, making the fly rod the ideal choice. There's a brook trout. All right, I accidentally snagged a Gasparo. This is what they look like. They look like little tarpon. Or like big goldfish. These are not good eating. I'm not gonna eat this guy. I'm gonna put him back so he can spawn. Pretty cool, look at that mouth. You know, it requires a lot of effort to swim up these rivers and through these rapids to spawn. And because of that, these fish have evolved to be very powerful swimmers. You can see that they're shaped like a streamlined torpedo with a crescent shaped tail, which is a similar build to one of the fastest fish in the world, the tuna. That guy might be eagle food. They don't respond well to getting hooked in the head. Finally, a little brook trout for dinner. Let's go. Two little guys for dinner. Perfect, this is what I wanted. Just getting where I'm standing was an adventure on its own. This morning I dropped my car off at the takeout, biked a couple hours to the put-in, and then piled another couple hours on the big lake to get to the headwaters of this river system. It's getting late in the year, as you can see, the black flies are already out and there's not a lot of water. So this might be the last brook trout fishing trip of the year. So I'm really gonna take it all in. This is an awesome spot. There's grass, there's turf here. At the front, this big tree fell and now it just works as a canopy. It's like a little sheltered spot now. It's quarter to seven. And the fire regulations here today, I'm allowed to have a fire after seven o'clock. But yeah, this is home. What a beautiful spot. And the gas bro, oh my goodness gracious. So just because there's not a fire ban on, it doesn't mean you can't burn down the forest because it's still super crispy out. It's, it'd be super easy to have an accident and light this place up. So 
I'm gonna be extra cautious. I have water nearby and make a very safe, controlled fire for tonight. I'm actually gonna move that farther away. Mashed potatoes, brook trout, and gravy. Super simple, came together real quick. Let's go, okay. That's a winner. I didn't put any spice or anything on the brook trout, but the salt's coming through the gravy, and then the mashed potatoes, I think it's like a herb and garlic or butter. That was an awesome meal. Super easy, three ingredients. One of them being fresh caught brook trout. The brook trout were cooked really well. I was able to just peel off that meat. Simple, easy, tasty, and super filling. Well, I don't have to tell you guys, you know I go to bed early. It's probably getting to nine o'clock pretty soon. I'll probably go to bed with the sun. I haven't even touched this river yet. I just got to the headwaters. And if it's this wild, it's gonna be an awesome couple days. It seems like the brook trout are gonna be biting. The peepers are out, there's a lot of wildlife. And it just, uh, I'm super excited. We'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early.
I got up with the sun this morning at about 5.30 and the forest is absolutely alive. I have an app on my phone, a bird app called Merlin and I ID'd eight different songbirds. It's the best soundtrack. Every once in a while, an eagle flies by too really low. I think I'm in this turf. This is really good gas pro hunting grounds. I'm gonna get on the water soon. Spend an entire day on the river. I'm pumped. It's gonna be an awesome day. I get the question a lot from you guys. How do I keep my feet dry? Especially in those colder months. Well, I'm wearing Kokatat dry pants. These have feet built into them, but to stop abrasion between the foot and my shoe, I add a neoprene sock on the outside for the abrasion. You could use a wool sock, you could use anything that, uh, that might work for abrasion resistance. And then for footwear, I use my old hiking shoes that are about a size larger than what I would typically wear. So I'm able to fit in all those extra layers. I might get a little hot in these today, so who knows, maybe I'll take them off, but in early season trips, these are crucial. I was walking the bank of this little riffle and a little bird started acting injured. And that usually means it's a mom and it has eggs around. I looked around and I found its nest that was on the ground. This time of year, a lot of the birds are laying their eggs. So I quickly got out of the situation and hopefully the mom's not too stressed out. So you gotta be extra cautious not to step on any eggs or disturb any moms. I'm under the impression that the trout are gonna be in the strongest moving water possible for them. The water's really warm, and yesterday those trout were so tight in that current, I think we need that to catch them. Come on! Look at that, buddy. I'm gonna put this guy back. Cause it's not dinner time yet, but it's starting to get a little more water in the river. And the first drop off, he hit it pretty quick. So I think there's more out there. Oh. This one's bigger. Look at that fish. That's a beautiful brook trout. I'm gonna let this guy go, but that's a beautiful fish. That would be a beautiful fish for dinner. I'm counting eight eagles up above me right now. Two, four, six, eight. It's incredible. I just tried to sneak up on an eagle, but they're so quick. I'm always just a tad too late to get a shot of them. Every time I come around the corner, they're there and they just take off.
Notice there's a lot of these pine trees that their entire root system has come up. And pine trees are softwoods, and softwoods typically have a really shallow root system because they're better at surviving in crappier soil conditions. So for example, in Nova Scotia, we have a lot of bedrock and not a deep soil profile. So in a lot of these areas, you only see softwoods. But when a big storm comes through, it can pick up and pull these trees down with their roots. Biggest fish of the year. Woo! Biggest fish of the year right here. Oh. oh! I'm gonna put this guy back. That's a beauty. Oh! Yeah. That was a fat one. Hopefully I was holding it all right. Man, I need to get a net. It just makes it so much easier. I was skipping the bugger on the surface and he came up and I set the hook and I lost him. Put it back, came back up, hit it again. Fat boy, let's go. After that excitement, it's time for some lunch. Smoked meat sandwiches. Hate to disturb all these gas, bro, working so hard. So far, I've just been dragging the boat. I don't know how much I've actually paddled. I knew it was gonna be shallow. It's gonna take a couple years off my boat. Right behind me, there's a deep pocket of moving water, and I would bet my money there's gonna be a fish there. Let's see. Not the size I meant, let me try again. Okay. Beautiful fish, let's go. He wants to squirm, I'm not gonna let him squirm. Nice fish. Oh. Another beautiful one.
This is definitely the crux for the gas bro. The water's picking up. Just made it to camp. Looks like it's a bit of a spot that gets flooded, but there's an old fire pit here and don't have to worry about flooding for this trip. About an hour ago, it started to rain. It started to drizzle a bit. The forecast called for sun all week. It's also a little colder. There's a bit of a pressure change. The bite has died as well. So I'm hoping I can get one for dinner, but I don't know. I didn't bring a tarp with me. Didn't think it was gonna rain. But I'm underneath this pine tree and it's pretty dry. It's either this or the tents. The gas bro stopped moving, the trout stopped biting, and the sky has no texture. So I think this is gonna be the rest of the night for me. I'm gonna have some dinner here or in the tent if this gets too wet. I'm gonna keep it really simple. I was banking on a trout tonight, so as a replacement, I have a cup of dehydrated beef. I'm gonna go ahead, put that beef in there, and also a bunch of potatoes. But this isn't just any ground beef. This is leftover shepherd's pie ground beef. So there's some spices in there as well. I think it's gonna actually be all right. Uh-oh. I should have done this right off the bat. I'm gonna sacrifice my cheese from tomorrow for tonight. I accidentally kicked a bunch of stuff into it. <laughs> Not bad. Not what I was envisioning for tonight, but a hearty stew on a rainy night. Not bad pivot. I brought one dessert on this trip. And tonight's the night. A squished butter tart. I feel like I snuck into this hidden time. You know, it's after the mayflies. It's before the summer. It's the time where everything reproduces. You know, this doesn't last long and I feel privileged to be out here seeing it for myself. It's such a beautiful time. The cycle with the eagles and the gas bro and you need low waters for the gas bro to go up the rivers. And that's when the eagles come in and, and they need the low water so they can get the gas bro. 
Yeah, I don't even know what to say. This place is just booming with life and it's, uh, it's a special time to be out. I want to show you guys a quick tip about boiling water on a fire. I like to cut logs that are long enough that I can fit a pot on. When I start the fire, I get a good base so there's enough fuel in there to keep burning. Then I put large logs across like a grill. That works for stability for the pot and also for more fuel that'll last long. I was in the tent last night at about 8.30, stretched for about 10, 15 minutes. It was a lot of work yesterday. Didn't do much paddling, but still traveled far. So I did a lot of dragging, walking, portaging, fishing, but I knew this. I knew coming in here that it was gonna be shallow. And you know what? The gas will need this to go up the river. So it's all part of the natural cycle. Today we have more action going down river. The water volume should pick up, there's more tributaries coming in. Hopefully I can run a few sets. Just getting ready to leave. Wanted to see what the bottom of the canoe is looking like. Honestly, not looking too bad. There's a few scuff marks, but you saw what I did on this trip. And then the last trip I did with Matt, I was just dragging this thing through the bog. So, man, a skiff set. I've been using a skiff for a long time. Their boats are as durable as they get. I did add some skid plates to this. I used a fiberglass cloth and two-part resin. I got this idea off my friend Tristan. I've taken these skid plates on about seven or eight trips so far.
Well, that pretty much wraps up this trip. What an incredible time to be out in the woods. You know, it felt like I was witnessing a perfect ecosystem. The rivers are boiling with gas and suckers and you have eagles picking them off in the shallows. You got the songbirds singing songs. You got the hungry brook trout. It is just booming with life out here. And I feel incredibly grateful to be out here experiencing it all. In a couple of weeks, Rachel and I are heading out on an 18 day backcountry canoe trip. We're going to be starting in Northern Ontario and ending in Manitoba. We're going to be traveling on a pretty iconic river. It's a route I've wanted to do for at least 10 years and I'm incredibly stoked for it. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the big reveal of this trip as well as our next post. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a blast. I'll see you next time.